big week in both of our houses. It has. I am royalty. Well, (laughs) (laughs) Cooper won Homecoming King. He didn't think he had a shot to win it, so he was surprised. We were surprised, and turns out they don't give the king a crown or anything. But whatever, yeah, yeah. But your your womb produced a king. Your womb produced a king. I'm the mother of a king. Yeah, and I'm I'm gonna own that for the rest of my life. So that makes you a queen, right? Am I right? Either. Yeah, either a queen or just an old lady. I don't know <laughs> one or the other, but either way, so what's been big for you? Uh, well, my daughter turned 13. Oh, my goodness. a big deal. Yeah, that's true. It has <laughs> been a big deal. So Zuzu turns 13. King Cooper turns 18. 18. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I have an adult. Yeah, I've got, an, I've got another teenager. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Which she, her birthday comes right after Christmas. She starts thinking about her birthday before Christmas of and um, planning what she wants, what she wants to do. And I'm just like, can we get through Christmas before we start thinking about this? <laughs> and her cr- birthday is a huge deal to her. And so she ended up um, having a sleepover with her friends. They did all the fun things. They stayed up all night all the stuff. She doesn't need any gifts, and so it's really hard to find her stuff. And so um, I got – her friends got her a bunch of things. Yeah, I went and I got her a pair of shoes that I was just like, these are nice shoes that you can wear all the time. (laughs) These are nice brown shoes. I hope you enjoy. (laughs) They were black flats, and all she wears is sneakers. So I was like, these are nice shoes. So how would she feel about that? Well, (laughs) she sat me down (laughs) after her – um, birthday dinner with the family, and oh she had opened goodness. her gifts, and she was like, "Mom, quite frankly, I am shocked at these <laughs> gifts that you picked out for me." Because and dismayed, I, 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 I just don't know what to think. I don't know why you got me these things, and <laughs> this is fantastic. And, and I was just like, "Well, you don't really need anything," and so I got, so you, I got a nice you black pair, shoes. I got you a nice pair of shoes that you can wear and dress up your outfits a little bit. And she was just like, "I don't really care for those." <laughs> I bet. I feel bad for her. <laughs> She's you, fine. She, I she feel terrible. A lot of things. And I tried something different with Cooper because he he also wanted to celebrate big. Just this year, he doesn't always. But I mean. Turning 18 is a big deal. And I'm like, what are you going to do? Go out and buy cigarettes? And then I found out you can't buy cigarettes at 18. I didn't even know that. And I'm like, going to go get a lottery ticket, get a tattoo. What do you want to do? And he's just like, mom, I just mean like, it's a big deal. So I said, well, then I'm going to need you to pick out your gift so that you, so it's meaningful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which really was code for, I have no idea what to get you. Yeah. And uh, he he has this one friend, and it's one of his closest friends for years, that really is like, country, like wears boots and jeans and a cowboy hat and all that. Fine. They are they are close friends. Um, and he has never turned Cooper into a cowboy. Yeah. But then you enter a couple new friends that also, one goes hunting all the time. It's like, you know, all the senior boys call us one day, tomorrow can we skip school to go hunting with Cam? Because, <laughs> uh, and I'm just like, you know what? Yeah, you can. Because why not? Yeah. Um, sorry, teachers, but yeah, just go, go do it, live your best life. So now Cooper's been hunting a few times, and so he wanted a whole cowboy fit. <laughs> so I was like, awesome, we're gonna do it. I was thinking we'll spend time together and we'll shop and it'll be so lovely, and it was lovely. But I guess I didn't know how much cowboys pay for cowboy boots <laughs> <laughs> and cowboy shirts and belt buckles. Oh my, we got, he got a, a belt buckle. Yeah, because it was at the. Did he tw- get a hat? He already had a hat. Okay. So, but the belt buckle was at the end. It was very expensive. But I mean, he was just, he looked eight years old again when he's like, Mom, but what about the belt buckle? And I was just like, <laughs> Yes, you can have it. <laughs> so he's got a belt buckle. Anyway, he's living his best senior homecoming king cowboy life. Good for Cooper. <laughs> I hope he wears that outfit beyond his senior year because it was kind of expensive. But whatever. Well, he's always got a costume in his closet for a Western dance. Or that's, that's true. Do like you that. still have dances, Western dances after you graduate high school? 
I believe I went to a square dancing dance when <laughs> I was in college. Of course you did. Of course you did. Of course you did. Before we get any further, we should probably introduce ourselves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I'm Heather. Let's go. This is my friend Jamie. This is the podcast Life in Motion, where we just chitter chatter <laughs> about all kinds of things. You never know what you're going to get. You never know. And sometimes it's going to be. Stuff you think maybe we shouldn't talk about, but we're going to do that anyway. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, it has been a, a busy week and a good week. Um, can we talk about our kids for just a hair longer? One one second longer, and oh then that's gosh. all the time they get. And then okay. it's time to talk about us. Okay. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> last week was a snow week for our kids from mm-hmm. school. It was we, a vacation. Uh, for you. We live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, so snow days are... Sometimes are traditional snow days, like snow dumps on us, but that's like once every five years. Um, other times, snow days are because it's really, really cold outside, and kids that need to ride the bus can't possibly stand outside. Not much cold because they don't have the right coats. Sometimes a little sheet of ice covers the ground, and nobody can go to school. They can all go to bounce you or <laughs> different bounce houses and jump all day, or they can go to the mall, but they can't make it to school, and so school's canceled. And anyway, we had snow week last week because we were out several days, and just before the snow week, I got an email from Eleanor's teacher that she and some cohorts at school were um, going to the library more often than they should, <laughs> and the the big deal was supposedly they were reading these books, testing over these books, and then needed to exchange them for new books. Well, the teacher thought maybe they're going too much, checks their test log, and they're not testing on the books. So, you know, part of me just goes, you know what? Who really cares? The (laughs) girls want to get out of class and walk up and down the halls. And then the other part of me is just like, I'm trying to train children that respect authority and obey rules, whether they agree with them or not. So the teacher does ask the the girls individually, and I don't know what the other girls said. I didn't get into their business. But Eleanor told the teacher, oh, yeah, I'm I'm testing on the books. The teacher's like, are you sure? (laughs) <laughs> and Eleanor didn't catch that that clue. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I know there really is. She went right over her head. Are you sure? And Eleanor's like, yep. She's like, well, I don't see them showing up on your test log. And so I, I'm not there. I can, But I can mm-hmm. only imagine because I believe that the lie went on for a bit. Well, I didn't like one of the books. And so I needed to just go get another book that I did like. And Anyway, so she got uh, in a little bit of trouble at school, and the teacher's like, I've handled it, just wanted to let you know. Well, I'm trying to raise a kid that respects authority and obeys the rules, whether you agree with them or not. So Eleanor and I talk, and I say, listen, sometimes I want to get out of class and walk up and down the halls, too. I get that. And sometimes books are boring, and you want to swap them out. I get that. But like, there's a couple of ways around this. Like, If you don't like the book, hey, teacher, I don't care for this book. Can I come early tomorrow, run to the library? And she's looking at me like, I'm not going to go to school early. I'm like, yeah, I get that too. Can I stay after school late, run to the library? And she doesn't want to do any of that. And I'm like, or just read the book and test and move on. But you can't lie to your teacher, so you're grounded. For a week, you can't watch any shows. Uh, which was no big deal until the snow week started. So oh, she was yeah. home without school for three days and could not get on any device the whole time. She's like, Mom, will you play dolls with me? I'm like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> She's like, Brian's like, I'll play dolls with you. I'm like, oh, super dad, of course Brian, you Brian, aren't you running an organization? You don't have time to play dolls. <laughs> Brian's taking midday breaks from his job to play dolls. And I'm just like, I hate playing dolls. I'm sorry, <laughs> I aged out. I'm too old for dolls. Mom, can we bake cookies? No, I don't really want to bake cookies. <laughs> Mom, Will you watch me do gymnastics? Oh, my gosh. Okay. So it was hard to find joy last week, which brings me to the point that I want to talk about. That that story about Eleanor is over. But how do you rebound from something hard towards joy? Mm-hmm. Didn't we say Didn't we say that's what we wanted to talk about this season? We took a break for a few months, and you were going through hard things. Yeah. I'm going through sure. hard things. And my question for today is— what is your MO when you hit something hard? Oh, yeah. Like a difficult conversation oh, yeah. or a situation because you were dealing with your dad being sick mm-hmm. and um, then and all of that comes relational issues. Sure. 
with your sisters and yeah. your mom and your dad and all of the baggage that comes with that family of origin. Sure. I'm dealing with stuff in my family. My dad came for a visit, which was really weird and hard and yeah. too long to share on this podcast. But it, it when you're met with these yeah. hard things, our natural response is something from our family of origin, what we learned and how we respond to it, and facing that pain sure. of how do I mature in my response to these hard situations? How do I respond? What's my level of tenacity? What's yeah. my how's my resilience? Sure. So what is your MO when it comes to facing hard things? Are you you're ready for me to answer? Yeah, I'm I have ready. two different MOs. I don't know if that's okay with you. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I mean cuz different situations are going to bring out different things. Right. M- Number 1, I'm really good in crises, in really big situations. I'm not so good in little bumps in the road. So my MO is different, which is is strange. But it, it's true. So, you know, we at the hall, my mom calls everybody and says, I think dad might be having some memory issues. And then I see my parents three days later and he doesn't know who Eleanor is. I'm like, this isn't a, this isn't a slight memory issue. Mom, you need to go to the emergency room. Um, only to find out within, you know, a week's time, we go from emergency room to emergency room. He has stage four cancer. He has a huge tumor the size of a baseball in the front of his brain, three more tumors in the back of his brain. Like he needs emergency surgery. You know, we don't know if he's going to wake up from surgery. I'm good in all those situations. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, sure, tearful and all that, but like asking the doctors the right questions. And mom, do you know what's really happening right now? Because her MO is kind of like shut down and entertained. Like she's Mm -hmm. entertaining the 30 people in the waiting room. Like, oh, I can't wait to, you know, go to that game with you. And I was like, hey, can we talk real quick? Do you know how significant this is? Do you know what's happening? And <clears throat> being with my dad in ICU as he recovers. And I mean, Brian is so good to me because he would tap out, tap me out and be like, you need to go rest. I've got it. To, I've got it the overnight or whatever. I mean, so I shouldn't say I'm perfect in crises by any stretch of the imagination. I'm, I'm thankful for Brian just going, you're getting tired. Head out. We'll swap. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm pretty good in there. I, unfortunately or fortunately, it brings out the best in my giftings. <laughs> bossing people around, taking charge, making decisions, gathering the people, loving on people, hug you, do a smaller blip, um, an off day, dreading something that's coming can throw me into a complete tailspin. And um, I would say the mundane of life can can almost take me under sometimes. And my MO then, which is so fascinating because I actually just had a follow-up with my psychiatrist yesterday. And I was telling her, it's weird because when I'm doing well, I'm doing so well. And I had a little bump in the road a couple of weeks ago over a trip I didn't want to go on. Seems so silly until Brian goes, I'm concerned. Like, you're not doing well. So thankfully, you were there and we had fun (laughs) and everything's fine. But I told her, I get so tired and I sleep. And she goes, number one, you're numbing. Because when you sleep, you don't have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. But she said, number two, when you're awake, your mind is probably going so quickly and you don't even notice it because you've done it your whole life. And she's right. Like my mind is just always thinking, not necessarily worrying, although maybe some just always thinking, always having conversations about like, how is this going to go? And what do I need to get done? And just a million things. And my mind gets tired. Like she said, I, she said, think about this. When you are so exhausted as you sometimes are, are you physically exhausted like you just ran a marathon or is it all up in your head? And I was like, I think it's all up in my head. And she's like, okay, you're starting to now recognize your MO, so to speak. So now we can work with that so you don't have to do that. So my MO is one of two things, rise to the occasion if it's big or stay in my head to the point where I can't function. Hmm. So what's yours? Um. <laughs> Probably mostly avoiding. Okay. Like you get into an getting into an uncomfortable situation and I can feel pain coming in yeah. some way. Not necess- not I'm not speaking of physical pain. Oh, I get it. It's like some sort of emotional pain mm-hmm. that I just don't want to get close to. So building a barrier to keep me from being hurt in sure, some way. Sure. So whether, you know. Just avoiding a conversation, pretending that something hasn't happened, yeah. just moving on. That I mean, my family of origin was we just don't even talk about 
issues. Yeah. So I guess what I'm thinking about is our resilience or tenacity to push into that pain to experience it oh for goodness. a moment I wish I could. and you know what what's the worst that can happen if i actually have this conversation or confront this issue or whatever it might be yeah i was i'm reading this book and it, i wasn't in kind i was kind of reading it thinking about the podcast and kind of reading it for myself but there's this particular there's two things two things this particular part um which is talking about recovery, which I was reading this th for myself and talking about joy center, the joy center in your brain, which is your prefrontal cortex. But it says that if you want to face difficult parts of yourself, you really need to have the ability to operate in joy. The joy center of your brain, the right orbital prefrontal cortex, is the executive control over your entire emotional system. When the joy center has been sufficiently developed, it regulates emotions, pain control, and immunity centers. I mean, it's just fascinating to me. So I go, immunity centers? So I've had these different chronic illnesses. It's it's the most mind-boggling thing. As I am becoming healthier, like my functional medicine doctor will be like, well, you're healthy because you're eating healthy, and you're healthy because you're exercising. And then my brain doctor will be like, or you're healthy because your brain's getting better, which is affecting your... Uh, energy level so that you can exercise, so that you can't. But they are all tied to to joy. Um, and if you want to, oh man, it's fascinating. When the joy center, center has been sufficiently developed, it regulates emotions, pain control, and immunity centers, and it guides us to act like ourselves. It releases neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin, and it is the only part of the brain that overrides the main drive centers. And the main drive centers are food, sexual impulses, terror, and rage. Anyway. It's, I get angry. Of course I do. I don't have enough joy in my life. That that challenge for me last week about finding a way to laugh every day seemed silly. And I'm like, I basically agreed to do it because you can't tell me what to do. I can too <laughs> laugh every day. It has nothing to do with your prescription, to be honest. It's just like, I'll take that challenge and do it. But then seeing that like my brain has the capacity to grow in joy for the rest of its life, that's pretty... And I don't know how we make it through crises, hard times, without at least moments of joy in the midst. I think it's interesting how we happened upon the question last week of what would you title this chapter sure. in your life? Sure. And I totally resonate with yours that I am the adult here. And, and mine is I'm still young. Yeah. And I have a lot of life left to live. And, you know, for me, I mm -hmm. want to really live the best life that I can, not only for myself, that, um, side note here, I live in the land of regret and woulda, shoulda, coulda. Like, mm -hmm. I look back on my yeah. life and I'm just like, I should have done that differently. I wish I would have said this. I wish I would have done that. Yeah. I regret that I didn't do this. I regret that I didn't speak up or whatever. So for me, going into this next season where I am still young or I'm going to live my mm -hmm. best life is I can't look at that anymore. I have to push forward through the pain of all of my regret and just be like, Lord, you knew. Right. You brought me mm -hmm. here. You you knew everything that was happening. And and I and you know I was doing my best. So here I am now. Yeah. And how am I going to move forward? Sure. And when we were having this meeting talking about this episode and thinking about the hard things that you and I have been through. Uh -huh. Thinking about, I was thinking about so many of my friends and knowing hard things that they are going through. Right. When you, when you find out things about your kids, and you know, you get called into the principal's office, or yeah. you get the email from yeah. the teacher, and you're like, "My little Johnny, right. Right. he would do that? No, sure. not yeah. him." And you find out, actually, that kid's a yeah. little sinner. Yeah, <laughs> right. You know, right. it's like or a big sinner. Or a big sin, you know. Yeah, you know. My and I don't mean size wise. I mean, or the sin is big. Yeah. <laughs> they might not be. <laughs> my mo is 
to kind of, maybe to hide. Like it would just be easier to hide. Sure. And I think of your MO when I think of I'm the adult, which t- so resonates with me. Sure. Of what I've got going on with my dad and my kids and everything. Um, it makes me tired to think about it. Hmm. Like there's just some things I don't have the bandwidth for. Wow. Of, like what? Well, my dad. Okay. He's got a lot going on. And I I need to call him, but I just don't have the bandwidth to deal with everything that he's got going on. Mm, yeah. And so how do I push through that? And how doesn't do- it seem like in life there's and I know you're saying this from a place like you're raising your own kids and there's enough going on. You've got five kids, which is a lot, and they you start thinking you're spanning an age from 10 to 20. That's a lot mm-hmm. of ki- seasons. There, there's a lot. I talked at a basketball game recently to a friend. I would say friend, and then, of course, I realize she's 15 years younger than me, and she's just, like, heartbroken because her son's not reading well. And, you know, and I'm just <laughs> like, it's going to be okay, honey. Yeah. But she is African-American, and she's just, like, with tears in her eyes, she's saying to me, like, yeah, but if African-American males aren't reading by third grade, they go to prison. So I'm I'm envisioning my son in the pen, and I'm just like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Bring it in. Bring it yeah. in. But you think we've got all these things from reading levels to sex, drugs, and alcohol. I mean, whatever, because because we've got teenagers and young adults, and it's a whole thing. So then you top on top of that. Doesn't it feel like life often comes too much at a time? Mm-hmm. And, and, and how do I and how do I get through that without just curling up in a ball and dying? You're going to have to take the same prescription and laugh every day. And don't look at me like it's silly. I was talking to we have a mutual friend who lost her husband this year. She's raising five kids, mm-hmm. and their youngest just may have just turned eight, either just turned seven or just turned eight. First, first birthday without her daddy. Mm-hmm. And the mom was just saying, it's equal parts deep, deep grief and sparks of joy. Mm-hmm. And she said, this little girl is, is getting me through because I have to wake up every day and find some joy for my kids. Yeah. And then feel all the feels and the heaviness and the weight of an indescribable grief. Mm-hmm. But if I don't have the moments to pull my head up and create joy for my kids, I don't know if they'll make it. Yeah. I feel like that's life. That's yeah. the picture of life is the the balance and the tension of having both at the same time. Mm-hmm. But I don't think we not we, just us, we collectively, community, know how to do it well, Yeah, to have joy and carry heaviness at the same time. Yeah. So I guess that's what we're talking about. Does that feel about right? I think so, that getting through the hard and in the hard, still having joy. Like, it's just not just miserable, burden, sad journey. Yeah. But... There's a lot of there's a lot of life to yeah. be lived right alongside the well, hard stuff. And the Bible says laughter works like a medicine. I mean, if that's true, if that's really true, the, then how do you find some laughter even in these seasons? So I actually appreciate the prescription you gave me, even though I received it with my sassy attitude, because it is true. It gets you through the day. It gets you through the hard. It gets you through the... Man, the pain of raising children is mm-hmm. real. It is real. So, so let's do and it. And parents. <laughs> and raising parents, yeah. <laughs> and raising ourselves. I mean, like, I am the adult, but I can't yeah. quit growing because I'm only a baby adult. I know. I'm still young. Okay. For Pete's sake. So how about um, this season, to wrap it up, since we played the game to open the season, we end every episode with just a question. Okay. Okay, so these these are pre-selected, but okay. I don't want to do them in the wrong order. So you pick what we're going to end with. One of them. Mm-hmm. Bring it to me. Oh, who do you think was the last person I stalked on social media, and what was I looking for? You go first. Okay. Do you want me to go first? Well, My who stories. do you think I – well, what? <laughs> who do you think I stalked? Oh, who do I think you – I do not – no, but I know it was someone because not too long ago you told me a story and I go, oh my goodness, save that for the podcast. So I know you stalked somebody, but I, I stalk. Can't. I stalk a lot of people. <laughs> I'll, I'm just going to be honest. I'm just going to be honest. I, if I hear your name, I might look you up and see what you're up to. 
<laughs> okay, tell me. Who'd you stalk? Uh, Can you say it out loud? Well, okay. So <laughs> one person or persons that I regularly stalk <laughs> oh are— Oh, my goodness. This is great. If I— and I frequently check out a book from the library, and they oh, I and remember. somebody leaves their receipt in the book, like as a bookmark or something. as a bookmark or something. I will look them up and who borrowed this book before me, and see what kind of person they are, and could we be friends in real life? Or <laughs> and then you send them a private message. No, and then you say, never okay. do, never, never, never do that. Hopefully, I never accidentally click like on one of their photos, but I do look them up to see if do we ha- we have the same taste in books? Do we like the same things in real life too? So have you ever looked someone up and you end, <laughs> end up like you've got mutual friends and stuff? I don't think so. Oh, yeah. Because that would be really fun. Because then you really could friend them. Yeah. And then be like, <laughs> oh, my goodness. We go to the same library. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. I'm glad that question landed with you today. Um, I think that's all we have time for. <laughs> Is that okay? That's fine. Okay. Thanks for joining us on Life in Motion. It helps us so much if you review or rate. Both. We don't know. We don't know Wait, what rate, helps us. Rate, review, rate, share. review, share, subscribe, like, send to your friends. All the things. All the things. But it really does because it helps us get um, into the into the what? Into the inboxes? No, that's so old. Into the mailboxes? No, even older. Into the algorithms. Into the algorithms of people like us that we'd like to be friends. We're not going to stalk them. We'd like to be friends with them. We think that maybe we have something they'd like to be a part of as well. So have a great week, and we'll see you next time.